Hello everybody, this is Luis Escobar. I'm going to talk today in this video about occurrence data sources and data quality to build ecological niche models. Um, first of all, a fundamental aspect of working with occurrence data is that we are working generally with reports of species or diseases in a geographic space. So geographic space means that uh, generally we are working with coordinates, with geographic coordinates. To work with geographic coordinates, we need to understand that in geographic coordinates, we have this zero that is the line that crosses the Ecuador, um, the Ecuadorian line at zero latitude. And then we have uh, the different values in longitude with a zero that is in uh, Greenwich in the United Kingdom. So both, zero, both zeros, the zero in longitude and zero in latitude cross uh, here in the ocean in the, uh, of the west uh, side of the uh, African continent. And from this point, we measure the different steps that we need to navigate to uh, identify localities in other uh, in other regions. So the points that are here are going to have positive coordinates in latitude and positive coordinates in longitude. While the values here, the coordinates are going to be negative in latitude and negative in longitude. Again, because here we have the zero and zero, uh, so that we can um, navigate using this. Uh, coordinates as uh, the zero, zero here as the benchmark. How can we collect uh, that information? Well, currently we have, historically at least, we have been using um, GPS uh, uh, devices to identify like the day, the time, and the geographic coordinates. Here we have the north, which means that it has a positive uh, value because this is the north uh, side of the world and this is going to be the south, everything that is under the zero line in latitude. And then we have here that is E, which means east. East is everything that is in this side of, of the line. And west is going to be all this part of the line here in this uh, plane. We now also have the option to get elevation, for example, or that we are uh, having coordinates in the ocean under the water. Um, most cell phones also have the opportunities now to collect uh, geographic information, geographic locality with time and, and date and elevation. And uh, similarly, uh, we also have Google Earth or Google Maps that are tools that we can use to identify one locality somewhere uh, from which we can obtain the latitude and the longitude for that specific uh, site. So we just uh, install the software, Google Earth, and then we identify a, a locality we want to identify. We click that locality and the software automatically gives the, the geographic coordinates. So there are many ways to generate that data. Um, Another, uh, that's if we go to the field, but also there are many repositories of data like GBIF, the Global Biodiversity Information Facility, that stores data from museums or other collections from universities or research institutes um, of uh, reports of species. In this case, I have plants. So you can see that these are specimens of plants for which we have the coordinates but they have a, in this data set, here you can see the map of records. They have many of them from North America and Europe and also Australia. And we also have some reports here in, from the ocean. Uh, this is the amount of reports we have. So these lines here show, for example, that maybe some ships were collecting data from the ocean. Uh, and you can uh, openly and freely access this data set uh, for any of the species, fungi, 
viruses, mammals, plants, etc. Uh, we can also collect data from research articles like uh, books, papers, and geolocate uh, those records using the tools I was showing before, for example, Google Earth. Um, so the idea is that we take that information and we link the occurrence information with the environmental variables in the geography. So we must be sure that there is a good match because we are going to try to reflect what's going on in the geography with what's going on in the environmental space. Something I would like to discuss today is the problem of a scale because maybe we are working something at the very local level for one species or maybe we are working, working at the regional level or at the global level. So the amount of detail that we need for that locality, if we are working locally, it needs to be high, high certainty, high detail. Um, in this uh, framework that you already know about um, how to develop ecological niche models, here we have the localities from the field that we need to curate and inspect carefully and in detail to be sure that there are no errors. There are no errors, errors in the sense that um, uh, maybe we are using the wrong symbol because it's not east, it's north. Maybe it's not a positive coordinate, it's a negative coordinate. So those kind of mistakes are the ones that we want to check by visualizing the points in the geographical space using maps. Because if there is an error here, that's going to be amplified in the modeling process and it's going to uh, influence how we see our final map of the disease. So what is a report? It could be a report of actual infection in a, in a human, maybe a human case. Here I have a, an infection in, the, in these silhouettes that are red. But maybe I don't have an active infection with somebody with fever. Maybe I have somebody with antibodies. Maybe I don't have the pathogen uh, available in my population but I can identify if the parasite was there or the virus was there by checking for antibodies in the population. I also can uh, have an infection, but it's too early for me to detect that infection because maybe it's an importation. Maybe I have a traveler that is infected uh, and I assume that my disease um, is not available in my population and maybe that's just because I'm, I, I, I still don't perceive that infection. So there are many sources of information about what are we uh, uh, using as a proxy of uh, disease. It could be the vector, it could be the actual pathogen, it could be the, the humans uh, with a positive serum, uh, so antibodies. It could be the presence of uh, the pathogen in the environment, in the soil, or it could be the reservoir uh, of the pathogen in the selvatic cycle. Here I use one uh, environmental variable, the mean temperature in June across Australia. And here you have many, many points. You can see that I have many, many, many points here. So it seems that the disease or, or my records are very abundant, but actually thinking in environmental space, in niche space, all these points have exactly the same temperature, 26 degrees Celsius. So even when I have abundant geographic information, this represents only one value in environmental space. So I want you to keep that in mind when we are talking about how rich is our occurrence data set, uh, because it's not only that I have many points, what is behind every point? I want the points to be very rich in environmental information that they provide. Also, what's the detail of my rasters of the environment here? Using a, a, in, in a crop plantation of potatoes, I have a drone to collect information of temperature. And you can see that here I have tiny pixels, like I are like three centimeters pixels of the temperature in the surface of, this, uh, uh, of the landscape here. So I have high detail. And if I am going to model something here, I need those coordinates to have accuracy of less than three centimeters. That means uh, if even if I have an error in my coordinates, it should not be higher 
than the size of my pixels. Because otherwise, instead of falling in a very hot place, it's going to fall in a very cold place. And that's why it's very important to know what's the level of error in my points, because the error in my point should be less than the size of the pixels in my raster file of environmental information. If I'm working at the global level, for example, uh, checking for the climate of um, the world, I can use uh, variables for which the pixel size is 50 kilometers. So in that case, it's fine if it's fine if my occurrences have error of let's say uh, two meters or ten meters because that's going to be less than the 50 kilometer size of my uh, of my data of uh, rasters, uh, the grids of environmental information. Um, yeah, and that was that's everything I wanted to show today about occurrences. That's an overview of what we mean by uh, talking about occurrences. As, and that's the information we use to link uh, uh, localities with uh, environmental conditions in those localities. Thank you.